Very speed. Two to speed. Here we go, guys. Quiet, everybody. Be sure everybody's cell phones are turned off. We're going to, well, this is going to be a whole new show opening. So just, yeah, treat it like a brand new opening. No, sir. All right. Here we go. So you'll talk to two. Five, four. Welcome to Get Moving TV. I'm Dr. Chris Landon, and I serve as your host. As the Director of Pediatrics at Ventura County Medical Center, we have the opportunity to teach family practice residents. As we teach them, the funniest part to me is to watch them have to look everything up on Google, and uh, they, they really have exteriorized their brains and knowledge. One of the things we want to do and, and have continued to do is to use binational health initiatives to go down to the Honduras, to go down to Peru, to go down to Mexico. One of the projects that's really tied us together is as we look at who takes care of our agricultural fields, who does the picking, as we look at our schools and trying to improve the health of the schools, as we look at horrible problems like bullying, uh, a project has really emerged out of, uh, out of La Colonia, the Mixteco project. And with me today, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Great, glad to be here. So tell me a little bit about yourself and how you, how you came into this area. And I know you're vaguely related to one of our family practice residents. That's right, my husband. Um, my husband and I are both from the East Coast and we moved out here because of Ventura County's medical residency, because it's so stellar. Um, and I work as the executive director of the Mixteco Project. I've been there for about a year and a half now. And what does the executive director do? Well, um, a little so, bit of everything. I do the grant writing and oversee a lot of the different programs and make sure that they're working well and also help pack bags of food once a month and meet with families that are having difficult times. So the, I, I know we went to a fundraiser mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, one of our nurse practitioners, uh, Sandy Young, had become interested because for us, the, the, when we try and communicate with our patients, one of the things we have right. to do is know culturally where they come from, and, right. and there are certain cultural beliefs about hot and cold medicines, about right. empacho, about uh, things that in Mexico might get treatment with lead, and we have to worry about lead poisoning. Right. Uh, and so as, we're, as she was working with these patients, she really saw uh, difficulties. Uh, right. What are some of the difficulties that, that have emerged? Because I know you have family support groups and right. really right. working together as a community. So the Mixteco Project serves um, the indigenous community of Ventura County, which is estimated to be about 20,000 residents, more or less. And um, some of the things that make it difficult for, family, for families is that um, a lot of the parents come straight from smaller towns in Oaxaca or Guerrero. And they come to the U.S. having spoken mostly Mixteco in their towns. So when they get here, it's sometimes hard to interact with service providers or um, schools, agencies, so with because of the language difficulty. And then literacy is also tricky. Um, some people lack Spanish or English literacy. So those things, that's sort of the primary place where my cup has started stepping in. Um, 11 years ago now, Sandy, um, started seeing just a big increase in Mixteco patients and um, with some of her patients called together this um, this monthly meeting they started just in Mixteco language and people started to come and really quickly leaders emerged um, it's one of the things that my cups really amazing about um, lifting up people and teaching them how to help lead projects and lead the organization so um, Sandy with these new Mixtec health promoters um, started identifying problems in the community and building up um, programs to solve the problems. Well, thank you so, for really giving us a, a good introduction to that uh, part of the organization. Uh, we're going to move on to somebody who's from that population. Great. And uh, uh, we're going to have some fun here. So uh, Ventura, you hang on. We're going to get moving into the Mixteco family. Five, four. Welcome back. Uh, I have Arsenio with me from the Mixteco Project. We do a lot of things in, in Ventura County. 
I was just at the Boys and Girls Club in, uh, along Ventura Avenue, and children were afraid to go from the Boys and Girls Club to West Park because they were afraid they were going to have their money stolen, uh, that uh, they were going to be bullied. Uh, we, we see tremendous problems, and, and a lot of us are culturally blind. Uh, we, we just don't see uh, the people who are in our community. And Arsenio, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about how the Mixteco fits, fits here in Ventura County. They're very much a part, very much a family, uh, wonderful celebrations and dancing. Uh, tell us about the Mixteco. Here. Sure. Uh, the Mixteco community, uh, uh, we're from the state of Oaxaca and Guerrero. Um, we estimate uh, like 20,000 indigenous Mixtecos live in Ventura County. Uh, for the last two or three years, we have seen a pretty uh, well um, form organized for this community, the indigenous community, through mostly uh, cultural events, such as the Guelaguetza is one of them, which is a pretty um, a big celebration in the state of Oaxaca. And also there is uh, some group dances and there is a clubs from uh, the indigenous community who organize themselves in Ventura County. So here we have this nice community, uh, family-oriented, really getting good health care for their children. Uh, but are they having problems in schools, problems at work? What, what kinds of things? As someone, I, I know two words in Mixteco, and that's <laughs> aha and ah-ah. Uh -uh. <laughs> and when I try and learn it, okay. I, I, with my college education, medical school, I have a very hard time. And there's different dialects. There's the high and the low, and if I get the wrong interpreter, <laughs> and so yeah. it's a hard time. Well, the aha means um, yes. <laughs> that way, the Miseco we say yes in, in our uh, language. With uh, the Miseco indigenous people, you know, the, as indigenous, we have faced a lot of uh, issues, social issues and economic issues. Uh, one of the biggest social issues we have faced as indigenous is discrimination, uh, mainly from other, other uh, Mexican immigrant people that, um, you know, they feel. They, they think that we, as indigenous, we are from a, a lower social class, not only in the United States, but also in, in the Oaxaca state or Guerrero state, because of our language. Um, the history is uh, 500 years of operation. operation. So um, I will say, or I will, the main problem is the language barrier, um, since, you know, compared to other um, groups in, in Oaxaca, the uh, Mixtecos, I think, or indigenous people are the minority as well as in the United States or in Ventura County. So I think that discrimination is one of the biggest social problems that we face as indigenous. I think one of the things, I've been down to hospital, Seville down there to, uh, to lecture about asthma. Sandy Young came down. Mm -hmm. And as she was talking about the project up here, a total blank look went out over the audience, like, you're doing what for the Mixteco? Uh, those are the people who live in the hills, and there's a drought, and I don't know, something happens, they're very poor, and why would, so uh, it's a, extraordinary to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so in terms of positive projects, how are you approaching things positively? How, how are you helping people to uh, get, avoid bullying? How are you giving them pride? Uh, uh, helping them succeed in school. What kinds of things does MyCop do to help that? Well, we have to know that indigenous, the self-esteem or the, or the uh, proud to be indigenous spirit, I mean, not, we as indigenous, we don't really feel proud of it, of being indigenous. Actually, the history of the indigenous people or the person who's indigenous is trying to always forget the language and forget the culture. So uh, through MyCop, I think the positive thing we're trying to encourage our community is trying to encourage them to keep their language and, and feel proud proud of our identity. And uh, by feeling, my cup has been, been approaching, you know, like the campaign, the no me llames Oaxaquita, don't call me a little Oaxacan. Mm -hmm. That is actually a discriminatory word that is being used against the indigenous and in, in, in Ventura. So we're, we're uh, starting this initiative or these campaigns by, you know, first trying to uh, make the uh, uh, self-esteem or the proud, the, why you have to feel proud to be indigenous. The second one is um, a strategy is trying to pass a policy in the school because we see discrimination not only in the school with the kids but also in, in farm work and the farm or the, in the work area, mainly with the parents. So um, we believe that through passing a policy and bringing awareness about these issues in the schools will help the kids to be, feel proud of the language. So uh, and also we are organizing. Um, 
youth to um, first trying to um, help them to feel to keep their language, and second is helping them to understand the education system, so they can be you know looking to go on for higher education. Yeah, to, to me, one thing informs the other. We learn by learning not to bully. We learn by learning about racial discrimination mm -hmm. uh, and, and to, so that to make certain that the schools are an active part of this. What, what kind of cultural things uh, occur so that people continue to feel their cultural pride? I think that uh, the culture itself, like the, the language and the traditions that we have, the beliefs that we have, and um, I think that is the main, you know, cultural part of us as indigenous to, be, to feel proud of it. To, uh, the idea of be, be the, the owners of one of the unique civilization of 3,000 years ago, I mean, that means a lot for the indigenous people. Be the, you know, one of the first uh, people that established in America, I think that is one of the things that we, we have to feel proud of it. But there is too much of uh, self-esteem damage in, in the indigenous and a lot of oppression that really the indigenous don't, don't see that, that proud, you know, they, they don't see why we have to feel proud of been existing in, in this country or in this um, area for 3,000 years ago. I think that uh, be the speaker of at, at least 17,000, that is estimated, that we're estimating that how old is our language, mm -hmm. be a speaker of that, a language who is that old. I mean, that is, that is a, a significant, you know, meaning for us, it should be that way, but we're, we don't really see it that way. Well, when I was, I was up at uh, Monte Alban and uh, out of Oaxaca and I, sat at the point where I think the world ends on December 21st at 4.51, they're at the <laughs> part of the pyramid that's facing differently, the sun will come down uh, just so. So you, there's also a, a other rich history beyond the, beyond the language. Uh, when you uh, prepare meals together, I, I, you know, I, I really feel the family mm -hmm. part. I, you know, I don't have someone sitting down and, okay, I'm not going to eat together as a family. I've got to go play my video games. I have to go do this. I really feel the sense that we have much to learn from, from my... Well, actually, it's like a lot of factors, like economic factors in our uh, communities, in the rural communities where we're coming from. And, and, and Oaxaca is, has a lot of to say because we don't have access to those kind of games. So there's more time to, to share with the family and stay with the families together and share more time, like quality time and, and be more like keeping our eyes on our kids and making sure that our kids is keeping the tradition and the language. But that has a lot of, you know, that changed a lot when we immigrate to a different place. We tried, uh, uh, because we have to have a translator to when, when someone comes in to speak who speaks mixed echo, high or low, whichever the right dialect is, to Spanish, and then <coughs> oftentimes a second translator from Spanish to English, and then goes English to Spanish, Spanish to mixed echo to <laughs> the patient, and then yes. back and forth. And some of these patients' children have very difficult problems, and, and they're doing very difficult things. We tried, uh, and it took about two and a half hours to uh, translate a uh, developmental screening questionnaire. Mm -hmm. Uh, but just for the sake of the audience, uh, can you, in whatever dialect you speak, you speak high or low? Here? Well, it's very tricky because um, many people just think that the Mistecos have two uh, different variations okay. of dialect, which is um, higher and lo lo or lower Misteco. But actually, the, we have identified that we have, the, we, in our Misteco language, we have 81 different dialects or variation. So I speak the lower. I can classify my my, di my variation as a lower. But also there are some uh, communities that they classify in the higher. So I I'm still being able to to understand some of their mixtecos or most of their mixtecos. But it's a lot has to to do because I've been in in uh, you know in the community for a long time. So okay, but uh, let me have you do something with me. Sure. Just take two fingers like this and have them move across your chest like that. Can you say get moving in one of your dialects there? In one of my dialects? Yes, yeah, so moviernos, get <laughs> moving, and how would I say that in Mexico? Or was, one of them? Kishinto, Kishinto. Ventura, Kishinto. <laughs> well, Ishigo, we're back here. Uh, we're here now with Dr. Carlos O'Brien. Uh, Dr. O'Brien uh, was one of our residents at Ventura County Family Medicine uh, Residency, and we showed an extraordinary interest 
in uh, really binational, that we really need to uh, respond to our patients who are uh, here from Mexico and are going to be going back to Mexico. Uh, the healthcare problems that we have in Mexico are the same ones we have here. Gosh knows we've exported obesity, uh, but we also have problems with uh, our agricultural safety. With you, know, you see a pickup truck going down the road with 20 people in the back, and you don't think anything about it. And if uh, if they're not, then they're, where's their seatbelts? If it wasn't just a bunch of agricultural workers, people falling out of out of trees. Uh, uh, while they're picking fruit and ending up our intensive care unit. So uh, Dr. O'Brien and I went to Mexico City to meet with the, the, the government there to really look at how can we train people and prevent accidents to really work on healthcare problems together. Uh, and during that time, uh, the Mixteco project really became a big part of our conversation too. So t tell me a little bit about how you got involved with the Mixteco project and, and the binational program that we've talked about in terms of training our residents in, in really cultural awareness and, and learning a lot from them as, as they do from us. Sure. Uh, thank you very much for having me on your show. Uh, it's a real honor, Dr. Landon. Um, I think my interest really comes from my undergrad experience and as going to UC Santa Barbara and actually studying cultural anthropology. And from there, just the international experience of learning about different cultures and different medicines. And from early on, I really got an interest in southern Mexico and the indigenous population, really trying to understand the barriers of care, uh, which is common through a lot of minority groups. So coming here for family medicine residency was really a privilege. I really learned a lot in terms of full spectrum family medicine. And traditionally, this program has been more to train international um, in an inter international setting, so providing the tools for our family physicians to work abroad as well as here and so it really was a great fit and having great mentors like yourself who are doing projects abroad uh, not only in Mexico but in Peru has been really uh, an honor as well to be able to work with you. I think at this time it's a very exciting time at Ventura just because there are so many opportunities out there working uh, internationally and even within our own community uh, currently, I'm one of the board members for MyCop, the Mixteco project, and we're doing a ton of things in within a, within the community, specifically providing a culturally sensitive care. We really focus on the patients and provide interpreters in their own language, and specifically Mixteco, which, as you know, is a very difficult language, um, and there's so much so many varieties to it as well. I think I was impressed. You 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 and your wife went down to there to learn Mixteco and came back going, well, we learned the word. We learned we were able to read the sign that said this is the way to the bar. That exactly. Was the picture you showed me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it, I mean, it's a very complicated language, and um, there is a great program through um, San Diego State University uh, that provided a one-month intensive course within Oaxaca City. Uh, so we learned some basic, you know, basic uh, language in terms of body parts and how to count, but it's such a difficult language to learn. So our goal, our, our lifelong goal is to continue to learn the language. And eventually, I mean, it would be great to provide a pipeline for, for future um, uh, Mixteco community members to eventually go into the healthcare profession and one day hopefully have a Mixteco physician to provide really great care for their, for their community and for their members. Well, of course, the Ventura County program attracts only the best and the brightest, which... Somehow I got in. I don't know how that happened, that, but yeah. Uh, have you done any postgraduate education? Are there other universities who are interested in this kind of thing? Is Harvard or USC interested in this international experience? I think there's a lot of opportunities. Um, uh, unfortunately, I don't know of anyone specific. I think right now I'm working with a USC fellowship mainly on teaching. But I think that since we're affiliated with UCLA and UCLA has so many projects, I think it would be easy to work with them or other projects as well. USC, I'm sure, would be interested. Um, and soon enough, hopefully, we'll start making these projects come to realization. Yeah, I, I went down and lectured at the Hospital Seville, and mm -hmm. we're really trying to get a, a relationship going so that we can share expertise. Uh, Dr. Siegel has uh, semi-retired from Children's LA, and he's got a big interest in uh, childhood cancers throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And we have in Oaxaca uh, a cluster of cancers that are probably genetic in nature. And we really hope to get places like 
Children's Hospital Los Angeles right. and, and others right. uh, interested in this as well. So. Right, and, and our own uh, pediatric oncologist, Dr. Bracho, has also showed some interest and in possibly to co-work uh, on a project like that. Um, so again, there's tons of opportunities and a great place to be here in Ventura. And I think more than that, um, within our community, we can volunteer um, here in Oxnard, for example. There's monthly meetings where you can go and help with the literacy program, so teach someone how to write and write their own name, uh, and also to help reinforce the importance of their own language uh, by even learning their language. So there's also projects where we can be able to teach the kids some basic uh, mixteco and provide uh, really a pride for their own heritage and their culture. So. Well, Dr. Ryan, thank you so much. So Ventura County, it's time for you to get moving. I want you to check out that Mixteco project. There's so much for us to learn as human beings uh, in getting involved in something like this. Okay. Welcome back to Get Moving TV. As a practicing pediatrician, we have clinics throughout the county. Uh, and we brought several years ago uh, Dr. Kathy Kim to talk about dental varnish. What we see, uh, even more so in the Hispanic community, is dental decay. We have to have early access to caries. You have to have early access to, to carry prevention uh, using the fluoride varnish. So uh, we have an educator and with, with me today. Hi, my name is Letty Alvarez, and I'm a community services coordinator for Ventura County Public Health. And um, since Dr. Kim has been here last, we've had a, probably applied about 14,000 varnishes throughout Ventura County to prevent tooth decay in the medical setting. And it works really well. We have seen a, a few hundred reduction in, in identification in caries. But like you mentioned, we continue to find tooth decay in the Hispanic community. And so we're constantly referring children to the dentist early. The physicians referring early has really made a difference. When I'm in the uh, medical office discussing this with patients um, or the parents, I'll ask them, have you been to the dentist? And they'll say yes. And it's due to uh, a doctor referring early, parents asking a doctor, should I take my child to the dentist? And can you please put varnish on my child? So we, we are seeing a slight reduction, but we're seeing an increase in dental visits. Uh, the Mesteco community, we are seeing the increases because they have the resource of MICOP. It's, it's helped tremendously that they're getting the education from them and they're getting the referrals um, from multiple agencies. So uh, we just need the agencies to continue to do referrals. Every referral counts. Yeah, as a pediatrician, if I need, I need kids to succeed in school and if they can't eat, if, they're paying, if their teeth hurt, they're really not succeeding. And my poor schools go, Dr. Landon, we're, you know, we're not the super parent. We're here for reading, writing, arithmetic, and that's it. Uh, we see little peaks. We have uh, dentical mm -hmm. coverage, and yet we don't see those kids being referred at age one and two and three. This is a sudden little peak just before they hit kindergarten, and then somewhere kind of late uh, childhood, early adolescence, they seem to peak again. Well, it's because they're getting those referrals and then they'll say, oh, well, everything's fine. But within six month period, a child can develop cavities. So that's why it's important for a child after three to see a dentist every six months so that all of a sudden it doesn't peak. And, and so we can continue to prevent tooth decay because if a child goes to school with tooth decay, they're not sleeping because they're, they're in pain. They're not eating well. So if they're not sleeping and they're not eating well, they're not gonna learn. And so it's all, prevention is the key. So how, how does a patient access Dentical? How can we help them with that? Well, we, through public health, um, through human services, they can go to an office and apply for um, Medi-Cal, which is a Dentical pro program also. They can contact public health and online. We have a, a online access. And so if they apply for a Medi-Cal, they automatically get put onto Dentical. And if they don't qualify, we have other programs that they can qualify for. So there's no reason for a child to not have coverage. I, and I think that's, that's really the key. Now, it, we have, it's wonderful to have dental partners uh, yes. who will take, you know, everybody worries about Medi-Cal rates and Dentical rates. And so they're really contributing back to the community when, uh, when they help us out. Are they there do. dentists up in East County and Thousand Oaks and Moore Park and Simi and Oxnard and Ventura? 
Yes, I provide medical offices with the list of dental health providers and healthy family providers that they can give to their patients each time they do a referral. So that works out wonderful. And if nonprofits contact me, then I provide them with the list also. So I have an ongoing list and broken down from the day they're open to the languages they speak. Well, what a great resource. You have a Thank great you. smile. Thank so, you. <laughs> uh, Ventura, it's time for you to get moving, get moving to that dentist, uh, become more culturally aware by getting involved with the Mixteco project. So Ventura, time to get moving.